My name's Charm Lang. I live in Billericay and I like history, so I was interested to learn about Billericay's connection to the Mayflower, which brought the first Pilgrim Fathers to America in 1620, and especially because one of my own ancestors, Captain Miles Standish, was on the Mayflower. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my Mayflower ancestor, who he was, and how I'm related to him. I was born in the UK, with a British father and an American mother, and as I was growing up, I always heard about this illustrious ancestor, Captain Miles Standish, who came over on the Mayflower. It's an important status symbol in America, which is a nation of immigrants, to be able to say that they can trace their family back to the Mayflower. And I certainly grew up believing it was something to be proud of. When I was little, we lived in Southampton, and in this picture from the 1970s, you can see me and three younger sisters, my mother and my grandfather, who was visiting from New Jersey, standing in front of the Mayflower Monument in Southampton, three generations of Standish descendants. At that time, I didn't know much about the actual history of the Mayflower. In fact, I used to assume that because he was called Captain Miles Standish, he was the captain of the Mayflower. Of course, he wasn't. That was Christopher Jones. Captain was a military title, Miles Standish was a soldier. But although I didn't know a lot about the history, my mother often told us about a famous poem that was written about our ancestor by Henry Wordsworth Longfellow in the 9th, 19th century. The Courtship of Miles Standish is a very long poem, but I just want to share a short extract from it and you'll see why later. It's a narrative poem about events in the early days of the Plymouth Colony, and in this extract, Miles Standish, who has lost his wife Rose during that first hard winter, wants to court Priscilla Mullins, a young woman who has also lost her entire family during that time. But even though he's so brave in war, he has no idea how to approach a woman, so he asks his more personable young friend, John Alden, to speak to Priscilla on his behalf, not knowing that John is secretly in love with Priscilla himself. But out of loyalty to Miles, John agrees, and here he is, singing Miles Standish's praises, until Priscilla says to him in the poem's most famous line, Why don't you speak for yourself, John? Needless to say, Miles's courtship of Priscilla was not successful, and she ended up marrying John. There's no evidence that there actually was a love triangle between these three people. Longfellow claimed to be descended from John and Priscilla Alden, and this was apparently a family story that had been passed down. But whether or not it was true, it took hold in the American popular imagination, as you can see from this painting of John and Priscilla's wedding procession. So unfortunately, not that much is known for sure about the real history of Miles Standish before he sailed on the Mayflower but it seems he was from Lancashire, and probably related to the Standishes who were a landowning Puritan family that owned the Duxbury estate. As I've said, he was a soldier. He served in the war in the Netherlands against Catholic Spain, and afterwards he and his wife Rose stayed on in the Netherlands, in Leiden, where many of the English Puritans who eventually sailed on the Mayflower were based. When the Puritan community of Leyden decided to sail for America, they asked Miles Standish to come with them as their military commander. The Mayflower was a commercial venture and their contract was with the Virginia Company. They were supposed to land in Virginia, where there was already an English colony at Jamestown, but due to a series of mishaps, they ended up in Plymouth, Massachusetts, which was, as far as they were concerned, a wilderness, and outside the jurisdiction of the Virginia Company, so when they got there, they had to draw up their own agreement for how they were going to govern themselves and live together. And this is called the Mayflower Compact, and is considered to be a forerunner of the American Constitution. And Miles Standish was one of the men who signed the Mayflower Compact in 1620. The first winter they were in America was famously very hard. Half of them died of hunger or disease, including Miles' wife, Rose. He managed to survive and went on to play a leading role in the colony, mainly as military leader, enforcing the rules 
and protecting them against Indians, but also as their treasurer. And although he didn't marry Priscilla, he did marry a second wife, Barbara, who came over on a later ship, and they had several children. Miles founded the town of Duxbury, which is one of the reasons we think he was related to the Standishes of Duxbury in Lancashire, and he lived there until he died in 1656. So the way that I am related to Miles Standish is through my mother Peggy, who as I've said is originally from New Jersey in America, and her maiden name is Standish. Her father was Franklin Everett Standish, known as Pete, who was my grandpa. And the picture on the left is how I remember him. But I also found on Ancestry, because during the lockdown I treated myself to the worldwide version of Ancestry, a page from his high school yearbook. So the picture on the right is from the Jeanette High School yearbook of 1925, and my grandfather is in the middle, and someone has written a little verse about him. Here is Everett among our files, a worthy descendant of old Captain Miles, like the Puritan brave, from neither powder nor gun, but from a powdered face will this lad run. This clearly shows how important his ancestry was to him, and also references the story of the unsuccessful courtship of Miles Standish we saw earlier. So after being in the science club at high school, my grandfather became a teacher of chemistry, but his father was a carpenter in Jeanette, Pennsylvania. And here is a picture of their family in the early 20th century. My grandfather is the boy in front. And you can also see his parents, George Washington and Kate Standish, and his three older sisters. I don't have any photos earlier than that, but I did find my great-great-grandfather, George Washington Standish's father, on Ancestry. And here's an entry from the 1880 US Census showing Daniel Standish, wagon maker, living with his family in Hancock, West Virginia. So the Standish family did eventually make it down to Virginia, even if Miles didn't. And when I discovered Daniel's father, my great-great-great-grandfather Miles Standish, I found that, like his namesake, he was a soldier, and he fought in the 1812 war against the British here is an application for a pension from his widow, Phoebe. And the military connection continues when you go back a generation to Miles' father, another Miles, who was a yeoman farmer living in Bridgewater, Massachusetts, but who was also one of the Minutemen, a militia made up of people who were unhappy with British rule and were prepared to get ready at a minute's notice and fight for their freedom. I found that this Miles, Corporal Miles Standish, took part in the very first battle of the War of Independence, a battle which was immortalised by another of Longfellow's narrative poems, The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. It starts, It was the 19th of April, 75. Hardly a man is still alive who remembers that famous day in the year and the midnight ride of Paul Revere. And thanks to Paul Revere's midnight ride, spreading the news of the British troops marching, the Minutemen, including my great-great-great-great-grandfather, were up with a minute's notice and ready to fight. Before that, I found it hard to get any more details of earlier standishes, except that it was Corporal Miles' father who sold the family estate at Duxbury, and also that Miles was a family name that was passed on for several generations. But what I found really interesting when putting together this family tree, is that Alexander Standish, the son of the original Miles, married Sarah Alden, and she was the daughter of John and Priscilla Alden. So whatever rivalry there may or may not have been between the Standishes and the Aldens, it seems to have ended happily for them with the marriage of their children. And this also means that, through my seventh great-grandmother Sarah, I now know that I'm descended from all three of the main characters in the poem we saw earlier. Since doing this research, I've learned that 25 to 35 million people have an ancestor who was on the Mayflower. So perhaps it's not such a special thing as I was always brought up to believe. But to me it's still special, 
and I've thoroughly enjoyed finding out more about my ancestor Miles Standish. Thank you for listening, and if you do have any questions, or perhaps if you're a long-lost cousin and want to get in touch, please leave a comment below. Thank you.